the more we can think about the body as being inherently and innately wise, the, the easier the process of healing is, right? Because instead, inflammation is really, it's, it's just a messenger that is indicative of a need to balance. This is literally physiologically all it is. It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. There are elements that if they become chronic can, you know, degenerate the body. There are elements that are regenerative, right? But what's interesting about it in, in the research that I've explored is that the body doesn't discriminate. So your psychological stress, your emotionally suppressed arenas, um, your deeper spiritual questions, and your physical exposures, you know, artificial foods and, and toxicant exposures and, you know, lack of sunlight, lack of movement, it all registers the same. The, the body doesn't actually know. You can have a psychosocial stressor or a physical stressor, and it reads the same on a cytokine level. To me, that's fascinating because we like to, in, in conventional medicine, think of them, you know, well, there's the mental, emotional, that's kind of over here, but really what we're here for is the body. And I do think, you know, the way I think about it is in terms of a triage. I do think like a Maslow's hierarchy, there's a order of operations. That's my bias. You know, I also am a passionate supporter of energy medicine and shamanism and, and many other more indigenous modalities that offer us the closest to a quick fix we could ever hope for with no side effects, right? But in, in my sort of more biologically based approach, I, I do think, okay, so let's pick the low hanging fruit of the, the physical realm first. Because if you have blood sugar imbalance or caffeine's just not a good fit for you or, you know, alcohol's throwing you all over the place or you have, you know, gluten or dairy antigenicity or, you know, you have a B12 deficiency, it's just simple stuff. The body is so forgiving. Within weeks, you could literally be a different person, also known as more yourself, right? So, so let's start there because it may turn out that you don't have to go on a psycho-spiritual quest, you know, to the motherland of your inner child. Um, and it may, you know, you may liberate energy that allows you to look at toxic relationships and whether or not you're living purposefully or, and, and experiencing adequate amounts of joy in your life, you know. The physical release of the holding of those kinds of chronic symptoms of malaise really does liberate energy for you to bring the rest of your life into focus including neglected areas like relationships and, you know, vocation and money, you know, sort of dynamics, etc. But, you know, so I sort of like to think everyone deserves one month of their life, adult life, let's say. It's one month of your life. It goes like this, right, where, where you conduct an experiment on yourself and you really explore, you know, what is my baseline? Who am I in this body, right? Do I really have anxiety? Do I really have insomnia? You know, am I really struggling with chronic headaches and bloating and constipation? You know, is that who I am? Or can I sort of peel back some of the layers and, and really get a clear image of what's at the core? You know, so yeah. that's really where I like to start.